Hi guys, Cosmo Cody here and welcome to what's going to be my review of Shadow Warrior 2. So we just finished playing Shadow Warrior 2 um, and I can, I'm can i quite happy to say I really enjoyed the game. Now I'm going to ignore the ending for the moment because that's kind of something I'm going to bring up in a minute. It's a negative but we, there's a reason why it's a negative but let's just have a quick look at the thing about the game itself. You know, Shadow Warrior 2 was the, is the sequel to Shadow Warrior, the 2013 reboot, and compared to that game, it is a hell of a lot better. You know, it's a it's just as much fun as it as the first game was. But one of the biggest sort of um, criticisms of the first game was that it was extremely linear. You know, you you basically went from level to level, start to finish, start to finish, start to finish. Whereas this one has more of a free roaming sort of aspect to it. But we'll get to that in, again in a, a minute. So first off, the good things about Shadow Warrior 2. <clears throat> first off, the graphics. Now, okay, the graphics aren't necessarily the greatest of the all greatest things that you're going to ever see. It's no, it's no doom, let's put it that way. But overall, it's pretty damn decent looking. It's fast, it's energetic, and it's clean, you know. Apart from some sort of issues I had earlier with the streaming was sort of lowering the, the frame rate, it holds... it. it holds a good frame rate it's a good speed it's it's you know energetic it's frantic it's fun you know you really feel a sort of a sense of speed a sense of um sort of necessity to attack as quickly as possible and everything like that okay the models aren't necessarily that heavily detailed but to be honest with you do you really care when you're slashing the crap out of everything not really is the answer but it, it does matter a bit more when you're doing sort of more the slow paced aspects of it. You do, when you're doing the actual sort of plot elements and talking to characters, it does kind of sort of take away from it. However, that said, the effects and everything are still fantastically good. You know, it's, it is, uh, you know, it, you, you get this into the weapons, the sort of the fire, the acid, the electricity, everything is sort of heavily detailed and everything else like that. So other than that, I'm, I, I, I'm impressed, you know, it holds its own, it's got, it's got a good engine, it's got a good graphics, it's it's good looking, let's put it that way. Admittedly some of it was a bit bright, perhaps I can sort of criticise that, but other than that. Sound wise, great, the soundtrack, as you can probably hear in the background, is actually playing. Um, fantastic, you know, it, it, the one thing you can't sort of fault it on is the sort of the the music sort of fits the whole sort of situation that you're in, you know, you feel like it's a sort of Japanese-esque area with certain sort of o sort of oriental sort of themes in the, in, the play, in, the, in sort of songs, but also at the same time you sort of get this sort of energetic sort of rock theme that over, this goes through the whole sort of um, sort of the, the, the sort of the, throughout the game, you sort of get the sort of whole feeling of how the music changes depending on where you are. If you're not in combat, it, it's sort of general and relaxed. If you are in combat, it's suddenly the tempo increases, and it's you know it's really really fitting. Special effects wise, again, well well thought out. The guns sound meaty and bulky, and certainly pack a punch. The swords, nice and sharp, sounding. I mean, you know, it's it's a well made game in terms of its technical ability. Plot-wise, okay, we're not expecting much plot. Let's put it this way. I mean, if you played Shadow Warrior 1, you know that the plot was extremely thin, to put it mildly, and it was drawn out over a good 10 hours worth of game. The same can be said for Shadow Warrior 2. It's not necessarily going to be winning any Oscars for storytelling, but it's going to basically... Basically, it gives you a purpose to do each and every mission therein. Now the side content is does have some sort of you know sort of general story thing, but at the end of the day, it kind of just is filler. For you must go and do this, you must go and kill these monsters and collect this. You know, it, yeah, they're fetch quests. You know, it's not going to be something that sort of taxes your brain that makes you think, wow, this story is really epic. The biggest issue with the plot is kind of the ending. The ending basically doesn't do anything or go anywhere. Kamiko, as you as you sort of saw at the end of the, uh, the my last video, basically opens up the gates f to the other sort of the demon world. A dragon comes along and eats sort of eats slow Wang, and that's it. What kind of ending is that? That's that's for all your you know all your trouble, all your sort of um, effort. 
you sort of apparently get eaten by a dragon. That's crap. Hopefully the DLC will fix that. But, you know, if that's the best they could come up with, I'm not... I don't know. I'm, I'm quite annoyed with that ending, to be honest with you. You know, at least in, in Shadow Warrior 1, you had the whole Hoji sacrificing himself to bring Amiona back to life. Uh, and the whole sort of over, over... The sort of story arc of how they sort of did this and did all the sort of work to sort of stop sort of slay the, the other sort of demon lords and everything else like that but this kind of just doesn't go anywhere at the end it sort of makes you wonder if there's going to be much more more to the story but you know it is what it is you know but it was it was good up to that point let's put it that way gameplay wise wow i mean it, it's like the first game had and borderlands sort of had a baby together and it's you know, it's, it takes the first game, it adds a ton of weaponry, you know, I mean the first game paid homage to a lot of the weapons from the previous sort of original Shadow Warrior game. This game just sort of says, nah, forget it, we don't need that kind of crap. And literally, you know, passes in new swords, new guns, new kinds of guns, I mean you, there's different types, there's, you know, there's two-handed, there's single-handed blades, um, you've got pistols, you've got machine guns, you've got submachine guns, you've got shotguns, rocket launchers, bows and arrows, nail guns, sniper rifles, you know, it, it expands the whole repertoire of weapons beyond any kind of real level that I've had, I've seen in many in, in any pretty much any game. I mean even Borderlands doesn't go that far with sort of bows and arrows and swords. But then it's not really that kind of themed game really. It wouldn't really fit with Borderlands. Plus you got the fact that you can upgrade them, you know, you can add you know, elemental damage, you can add different sort of um, upgrades and everything. The kind of downside to that kind of system was that it's not really explained very cleanly. And at the same time as being able to upgrade weapons and everything like that, with sort of various upgrades and things like that, and to sort of make it so you can dual wield, sticky grenades, um, you know, controllable rockets, things that were sort of are in various other first-person shooters. It's pretty nifty that you can upgrade them, but at the same time, you, as you saw from me sort of trying to figure out what I could sell and what I couldn't sell, it wasn't clear what was good and what wasn't good based on level. I mean, I can I sort of got the gist of when I sort of re-indexed the sort of um, upgrades based on various level systems, but there wasn't any sort of clear, concise meaning to them. It's, it's kind of like... Um, how Skyrim was when it wasn't obvious what what was good and what was bad necessarily, or what and until you sort of got things like Sky UI installed, the, the actual sort of mod, which made it a lot easier to understand all the information. I think it's just a UI problem. I sort of need to figure out a better way of show, comparing each sort of upgrade. Maybe I missed a trick there, but may, I I couldn't understand what was going on with some of that stuff. But you know, overall, you sort of get this whole sort of feeling that there's no particular sort of perfect weapon. You know, your, your weapon tastes are going to dictate what you do or don't use during the game. Which I think is a really clever idea. You know, you don't want necessarily want to sort of say this weapon is better than that weapon because of, of X. When you can actually take X and put it into any other weapon pretty nifty you know and you also need to sort of pay attention to the enemy types make sure that you're going you're not using an acid weapon against an acid resistant weapon uh, enemy otherwise you're kind of wasting your bullets and you need to sort of switch out and choose a weapon that's not going to waste your time and energy but i can you know it's definitely up there with a clever sort of it's got a very cool sort of um gameplay element to it that you can actually do a lot of sort of tactical choices in terms of how you customize your weaponry. Add to the fact that you've got sort of better sort of jumping about and momentum sort of uh, abilities, I'm say elements there. So you can actually jump around nicely, you've got double jump, you've got this sort of the, the sort of shift jump, whatever you want to call it. At, I mean, shift because it's that initial key, but you know, in general, it's a huge improvement over the original and it's a lot, a lot of fun. It plays a lot like the Doom, uh, like the Doom reboot earlier this year, but the, it doesn't have the sort of the finesse, shall we say? It, it's it's good, but it's not as good. You know, that's just my opinion, though, and obviously you're entitled to your own. Now, the one thing I 
can't, well, I can and I can't comment on much is the multiplayer aspect of it. You can play the game co-op. Now, I opted not to because I wanted to experience the plotline myself and, and, you know, maybe at a later date go through the multiplayer. I actually did try the multiplayer and that's my, that's, <laughs> that's my Discord telling me I'm offline now. I did actually try the multiplayer after um, I played, after I finished the game. And overall, I wasn't that impressed. I mean, maybe it was because I was playing with randoms and not necessarily any sort of friends or anything that know how to play a game. But the first game I got kicked, and the second game the guy just sort of stood there and didn't do very much. So overall, it wasn't that interesting. You know, it was pretty much just the same game, but just with added people who were in control of the game and just did how they what they thought at the time. So whether the co-op sort of element adds anything to it, I can't really say. I don't think it does at the moment. And from what I have read, they're, they're still working on the co-op stuff. It's only recently got a chat system. So maybe there's more to come in in terms of that and future DLCs. Now, I say future DLCs because they have promised them since they are now s sold like four times as many Shadow Warrior 2s as they did Shadow Warrior 1s. So from what I understand, there's a sort of big deal of more DLC, more content coming. But overall, the game's well made. Well, I say it's well made. It's well made at the moment. There have been some issues I have been reading, but because I've been sort of playing in sections that, and the patches have been coming thick and fast, they've sort of upgraded the game as I've played, and I've not noticed that there's been any changes made to it, any sort of obvious problems with it. Um, obviously, maybe that's because they're trying to get the game on, out on the console for next year. But overall, I can safely say that I had no real technical problems. I think it crashed once or twice. Or maybe I'm thinking of something else. But in general, the game was quite stable, quite um, yeah, quite stable, quite easy to carry on with if it suddenly did go wrong. And that generally is my review. You know, it, as I said, I think it's a great game. Not necessarily, you know, up there with the classics or up there with the big shots, but it's definitely a game that you sort of can pick up quite easily, jump in, play a bit and jump out. And that's a fairly sort of casual first-person shooter with a huge violent street, a lot of blood, a lot of gore and a lot of weapons. And I, I, can't, com I can't complain about that. So, although I can't actually do the scoring thing because I haven't actually set that up for this sort of review section, I think I will give this a fair 8 out of 10. You know, it's a it's a fun game. I enjoyed it. Definitely, I'm definitely come back to it and see what the DLC is. If the if the sort of if the advert if it sort of advertises something that I really want to play. But other than that, I had a blast with it, and that is it for my my review basically. So as always, thanks guys for watching my playthrough. If you watched my playthrough of Shadow Warrior 2, great. If not, go watch it. Go see how I how I played it and what. I, and hopefully you find it quite enjoyable. Otherwise, this is the end of my review, guys. Thanks for watching it. And I will see you next time for another game, hopefully. <laughs> Until next time, guys. Happy gaming.